Hello, this is Matt Leonard on behalf of the Foundry and in this video for Nucate we're looking at the new wireframe render features. So firstly we have a number of new wireframe render options on the render node of various knobs existing in some of the geometry nodes. So if we zoom in to one of our pieces of geometry, let's say we're going to go with our main roof. So I'm just going to navigate to the top of this model. And what we're actually looking at is an entire 3D model generated in Maya that could have obviously been Modo and then rendered having been shaded and lit inside of Nuke. So here's our 3D model. And we want to look at just say this section, say the roof. So if I come in here, you can see this is the beach hut roof. If I open up this in our properties panel, you can see that we now have this new section under render where I can say that I want it as before textured, solid or off. But I can also include now solid with wireframe and also textured with wireframe. So if I said textured with wireframe and I go back to my 2D view by just pressing the tab button you can see now that we have a nice wireframe rendered directly on top of our texture. So again, I can just come in and turn that back to textured as before. Now we can also add wireframe as a shader. And this is a new shader that we're going to find under 3D. Shading and wireframe. And this can be applied to any piece of geometry and we have various things that we can do with it in regards to how it shows the wireframe in conjunction with the existing material if we're going to be wanting to include that. So let's come to our 3D view and let's say we're going to make our tree here wireframe. So we're just going to zoom in. Let's go ahead to our default camera and we're going to choose create a new camera. And if I just go ahead and look through that camera, if I just go ahead and look through that camera, we'll just budget back a little bit. So I'm going to hold command or control and click. So this goes green. And now when I move, I'm actually moving the camera. So let's nudge around to somewhere like there. That looks like a nice place. Click this off again and return back to my default view. And with this camera, I'm just going to bring this right down to the bottom of the tree. So let's zoom out down to the bottom of my script. And I'm just going to use this here. So I'm going to swap these out. Now to swap two nodes, if you're unaware of how to do that, you hold down uh, Command or Control plus Shift. But you do it once you've got the node selected. So you select the node, then you hold down Command or Control plus Shift drag it over the node you want to replace and then let go with the mouse and it immediately swaps those out which can be very useful. So again I'm now going to press uh, tab just to come back to 2D. You can see our scan line now just begins to redraw based on that camera angle. Now while it's doing that, let's just zoom in to the section where the trees are. So I'm going to press J to jump and jump calls up existing bookmarks that have been set on either backdrop nodes automatically or normal nodes if we had chosen to do that. So I want to go to my uh, trees and they're under palm trees. So I go to palm trees, it loads in that section. If I wanted to have a bookmark node on a specific node, I could just select that node come across to nodes and just add a bookmark here. So if I want to bookmark read 12, I can do that. And again, with an actual backdrop node, which does it by default, you can see I can actually turn it off if I don't want to include it. So that can be useful. But for what we want to do, we want to take this tree and make the shader a wireframe. And at the moment, what we've got is we've got bark and we've got a leaf. So I'm going to take those off. One and two. And I'm now going to add in our new 3D shader and wireframe. Now you can see that the wireframe has an input and an output. So if we want, we can actually plug this into our existing material. So I could plug it in here and then I could plug the wireframe back into our Regio. That's what I'm going to do for this instance. 
And what you can see is we now have a really nice wireframe render of our tree. So let's push this into position. Let's just drop back to our 3D. I'm just going to look through that camera again and we're just going to move in a little bit closer. So let's get it right in the view so we can really see what's going on. And again, drop back to 2D by pressing tab. So now you can see as the scan line comes up, all that wireframe in a lot more detail. So what are the options we have? Well, first off, we have just the straightforward channels. What are we actually uh, using? So we're putting it into RGB and A, which is what we'd probably want unless we wanted to put it into a custom channel set and channel. We then have the operation and we've got a whole selection here. We've got opaque, see-through, over, multiply and modulate. Well, opaque is simply what we have here. We have the wireframe over black. If we go with see-through, what we then have is the wireframe applied on top of a fully transparent geometry. So as you see, as the scan line is going up, all of that black is now disappearing and we're seeing straight through the geometry with only the wireframe available. And because we're looking through dense foliage, we're obviously seeing an awful lot of wireframe. So that see-through, again, can be a very nice option. Next up, we have over. And what over does is it applies the wireframe on top of the input shader or texture connection. And that's what we had originally. That's where we have our texture coming in and then the wireframe is just being applied on top of that. So again, as the scan line goes up, you can see that now just being applied on top of the original texture. So next up is multiply. And multiply is very similar to see-through, which this obviously makes it fully transparent. But the wireframe is multiplied by the input shader or texture. So again, as the scan line comes up, you can see what we're getting. So the wireframe is now actually taking on the color of the original leaf. And what we're seeing then through the uh, solid area is just pure transparency through to the rest of the scene. So this multiply option is really useful if you want to give the wireframe a color based on your input connection. Now the final option is our modulate. And what modulate does, it applies a standard diffuse shader to the wireframe, which takes light into account. And again, it kind of gives it a more of a 3D feel. I quite like this option. Now, as the scan line goes up, we've obviously got two more options that no doubt you can work out very easily. You've got the ability to adjust the overall line width. So if we wanted it to be a thinner wireframe, we could go with, say, a 0.1. And obviously a fatter wireframe would be one or more. You can obviously make it so fat that it just becomes solid, which wouldn't necessarily be useful. And then we can also apply a line color. So if I switch back to say opaque so we just get the white wireframe now on top of a black we could then come in and choose our color drop down and i could say i want all of my wireframe to be a nice red color now obviously this is really nice just for kind of artistic control if you want to make something look techy or just see the wireframe. But it can also be really useful for doing things like enhanced control for projection alignment, that kind of thing. So that's the wireframe shader. And again, this has been Matt Leonard on behalf of the Foundry looking at these new tools and techniques in Nuke 8.